Welcome to part 24 of Play to Earn Crypto Games that you need to play. I'm your host Chaos Dubs and today's episode it's going to be something a little bit different. We're going to focus on three crappy crypto games that shouldn't be allowed. We're going to cover three games that as of this time are so bad, so unoriginal, so clunky, motion sick inducing and hard to play that I recommend that you do not play them. Let me jump right into it and punish myself for your amusement and education so you don't have to. This is part one, Magic Eden. Magic Eden is an NFT marketplace using the Solana blockchain. And aside from it being an NFT marketplace, they also host a blockchain gaming platform similar to Gala or Wemix, where they use the launchpad to get blockchain games running and on their platforms. And they also feature a creator portal. I'm guessing for you that's probably nothing new, but it helps to develop a basis for my thoughts on this platform and the games that we're gonna talk about. So under the games homepage, you'll see several games which are free to try out, and some which are still under development. If you click all games under the bar at the left, you'll get an easier uh, to view list of them all. Now, I don't wanna go too in detail here, but I have one major issue with this platform so far. I will get to that after we talk about the first game, and the first couple of issues, I guess you could say. This first game is called Panzer Dogs. So, crypto gaming, of course, is not without its issues. After all, it's still in its infancy. But games such as this continue to confuse me as to who they're really marketing to. Like, who's your target audience with a game like this? Are you marketing to children in crypto? Late bloomer adults? People who have no taste? It, it just absolutely baffles me. Like, it's majorly cheesy, and it seems very haphazardly put together. The dialogue, it's almost embarrassing, and the text stays on screen way too long, as if it's like, you know, pandering to kids who read slowly or something. It is clearly low budget, with pixelated graphics, clunky and awkward controls, as well as really lacking any substance. This game is much less than addictive, it really lacks the core gameplay loop one might expect, and it just really made me not want to play it at all. Although I did get some footage of this game, it has so little to offer currently that I really don't have anything exciting at all to show you. But you basically roll around eliminating enemy tanks with basically zero chance of failure. There's really nothing to it so far. Now, I know it's in early access and all this, but still, like, this is really... It's, it's just terrible so far. Let me know in the comments if you feel like this game could be a lot better or if it's something that you'd enjoy. I'm not going to judge you, but I'm just in the pursuit of knowledge and understanding of crypto games seemingly being marketed to children and why and, you know, who they're really marketing this to. If the game does interest you, feel free to check it out and learn more at magiceden.io slash games slash panzerdogs. Now before we move on from Magic Eden, I'd like to discuss another game from this platform. This, this game's called Double Jump, and it's an absolute shitty ripoff of Blanco's Block Party. This game is total crap, at least at this point. And, I mean, based on my opinion, probably into the future. But honestly, I'm almost speechless that a company is trying to be serious and professional. I mean, this is a blockchain platform after all, and I want to know my money isn't being handled by children. But they're also going to stoop to this level of unoriginality and poor development. So are they really serious and professional? This watered-down blatant copy of Blanco's Block Party sees you playing two different games. One race game where you race the other opponents, and if there is any that is, um, but it's really just the same as Blanco's Block Party. So, you know, you dodge balls, you jump through gaps and walls, and so on and so forth. And the other is which uh, I haven't actually got to play yet. It's essentially a game where every tile of the floor that you step on, it disappears. So far, the player numbers are super low, so every time I try to go into that one, it just shows me nobody is in there, and then I win right away, so it's kind of pointless so far. Um, the game is just really clunky. It's just not worth it, honestly. Uh, don't even bother with it, and just check out Blanco's Block Party. I'm going to leave a bubble up top for the video that I put out on that definitely worth checking out it's way better than this it really just baffles me that with a team of people both internal and external that none of them can come up with even a remotely original idea they have to rip off some of the top crypto related games out there like basically just so they seem like they have a legitimate product which is ridiculous this could certainly be a warning sign to invest wisely if at all with magic eden and of course always do your own research as this level of laziness and blatant copying of core ideas and game mechanics such as this makes me very uneasy with that, let's move into part two. In doing many hours of digging and research over the last several months to bring you these crypto game videos, I've come across a lot of totally crappy projects, totally terrible games, and companies that I would never support. It's quite unfortunate for newcomers and people outside the crypto space to see these very poor and often lazy examples of games loosely implementing NFTs and perceived value and many times are just pump and dumping with users' money. 
To the uninformed, crypto and blockchain gaming seems foreign and can certainly be confusing at first, so you can't really blame them for being extra cautious or even totally convinced it's all a scam. Hell, I'm not a newcomer and I'm even very wary about pretty much everything in this space. As a community, as a movement, and as the future of the world, we must be setting a better example than this. So this is what I think of the next game we're going to talk about, called Souls of Meta. This steaming pile of crap is made using Unity Engine, which is also terrible if you ask me. With them touting low poly graphics is a good thing, Unity makes me motion sick very quickly in many cases. Thankfully, this particular game, that's not the case, but this game really just doesn't have a lot to offer to make me keep playing, even if it doesn't make me motion sick. So, it's third person, and you go on an adventure if you can call it that. If you head to town first, you'll see purchasable characters right away, of course. It appears that these are purchasable using the coins you collect in-game, so I guess that's a good thing. From there, you can access two or three other areas. We're only really going to show you one here because it gave me no desire to continue whatsoever. This is basically a shitty version of 3D Mario, Sonic, and Skyrim all kind of put together, and it's like the worst aspects of all three of them. It's got terrible clunky controls, no indication really of what to do, and for me that's not such a big deal, but many casual gamers prefer some type of help, and really it gives you no reason to want or continue the adventure. Just for coins? No thanks. The graphics suck, and the mandatory jumping and air walking to clear gaps is super frustrating and needlessly difficult, and essentially once you're locked in the level, you're pretty much stuck in there until you I guess complete it, because you can't go out the same door you came in. The combat is absolutely awful. If you don't like Skyrim sword fighting, like a lot, stay far far away from this. This game made me bored in just a few minutes and I bet it will make you bored too. I don't recommend it at all, but if you want to try it, head over to soulsofmeta.io. Before you, oh man, I'm getting tired. This game's boring. Before this boring game makes me fall asleep, I want to mention there's a bunch of brand new content out on my other channel, Chaos Bikes Garage. There's a season teaser, a prologue for May Long, and the currently unfolding May Long Weekend Saga. All featuring a bunch of slick aerial footage, first person action, the locals, and good times. We're really bringing up the level of production this year. So if you're into outdoor content, dirt bikes, ATVs, 4x4ing, and just simply good times, subscribe to Chaos Bikes Garage on YouTube and earn my eternal gratitude. With that, we're going to go into part three. So when I'm digging for games, I'm always looking for potential gems. Of course, what I consider a gem may not be quite the same as what someone else prizes in a game, but there's always something for everyone and I try to bring a variety for you every week. Almost everyone loves a good first person shooter every now and then though. So I'm always on the lookout for the next Battlefield competitor, the next Call of Duty competition, or the next Counter-Strike killer. When I see games like this, I usually stop dead in my tracks to download a test and learn as much about them as I can. I find many games and developers, specifically in the blockchain game space, make massive promises that are very hard to keep, and they often involve money. So I try to be really cautious about a lot of this stuff, and essentially I focus on always making sure that they have a working playable demo, and it's got to be more than just decent. It must be a good game with refined gameplay mechanics, and the games must be easy enough to understand and join without lots of other steps, and it must be fun before I would ever consider investing my money with them. So keep that in mind as we discuss this next game. On the surface, it seems really great. Once you play it, it's kind of like, eh, I'm not so sure. This is called Arsenal, another steaming pile of shit made with Unity Engine. So motion sickness is like a free added feature that they don't mention. Due to the near puking dizziness I got from this game within just about four minutes of playing, I was not able to play more. Um, I basically just got a chance to play one map and one game, and I didn't even finish that game. But that was about all I needed to play to see what this game is about. Where to start? Oh, well, this game's super clunky as the other ones are um, in the control and movement department. And the footsteps are really not synced well, and they're also cranked up like pretty much as loud as gunfire, which only adds to the dizzying confusion when you're trying to move around. Uh, right off the bat, the sensitivity is turned so low you can't even turn around without picking up your mouse like four times. So that was kind of a pain in the ass. Um, the guns are absolutely terrible too. They do very little damage, even close up, and getting too close is an absolute nightmare due to the clunky nature of the game. The sights are terrible, the graphics are pretty poor, and the gameplay is crap. I'm not sure why anyone would play this game for any length of time. There's really a whole lot better out there right now for free. Arsenal appears to be a shitty ripoff of Pandemic Shooter, which I will leave a link for in the bubble at the top here for my video on it. You should really check it out. This game also reminds me heavily of Killbox Aquarius, which I believe is also another shitty ripoff of Pandemic Shooter. 
So, Pandemic Shooter is an overall pretty decent game, to be honest. It's got decent gunplay, decent movement, and overall relatively addictive online play. Not to mention, much, much more active servers, constant new events, and more. It's certainly worth trying in place of this hot garbage. Um, another thing about Pandemic Shooter, it is running on Unity as far as I remember, but the graphics are much more refined and it's a lot smoother, so I didn't really find any motion sick problems with Pandemic Shooter. Uh, a couple other games that you could try in place of Arsenal that remain crypto related that are still going to be shooters and just a hell of a lot better than pretty much all three of these games put together that I've mentioned today would be EV.io or EV.io Ev I guess and Phantom Galaxies. If you haven't heard about Phantom Galaxies you got to check it out. It's available now. You can get an NFT and start playing it for about 10 bucks uh, and that'll get you into the game at least for now. It's totally worth it. There's a decent storyline and you get to play around in an open world. So, I mean, it's pretty fun. There's some missions and the graphics are incredible. It's a whole different concept on mech fighting. So please don't waste your time or money on the crap that we've talked about today and thank me later. Check me out on TikTok at Chaos Dubs and at Chaos Bikes. I've got a bunch of new shorts coming out on the Chaos Bikes talk. So head over there for their bite-sized content. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Chaos Dubs, of course, if you found value or entertainment in this content. And leave me a like or dislike, depending on how you feel. It all helps the channel grow. I appreciate it a lot. Check out my other channel, Chaos Bikes Garage, on YouTube too, of course, for a bunch of brand new full-length content. And we'll see you in the next one. With that, I hope this video finds you well. You take care of yourself in these trying times. Be grateful. Chaos Dubs, out.